In this video, we'll run through the benefits of using queries with numberings, drawings, bombs, lists, DXF, and NC files. So just to show you what we're going to be doing, two queries were created. Column with model role, I can turn that on. You can see all the columns are highlighted. And a beam with an I section of 21 by 55. We use the so let's create that query of a section class type and size. It's going to be beam with an I section of 21 by 55. I'm going to select the create query question mark icon. Up comes the advanced steel search and marked objects dialog box. Make sure complete model is checked. Current mark set is highlighted because the columns were pre-selected in the structure. So you can see the columns and they were assigned a color blue. So the next thing we want to do is we want to change out the color. So we want to assign the elements a color. So let's check the assign color and uh, I'll put it at green. Actually green it would be better for bolts. So I'll change out that color and put it to cyan. So we have signed the color for, of beams to cyan. So once the color has been assigned, we'll jump down to the objects panel and we'll choose the objects we want included in the queries. So it would be appropriate to select steel beams. There's many other options. Please take note of all of the options with the checkbox to the left. So let's slide down and we'll select the panel beams. Again, we want to choose steel beams with a certain section size. Take notice of the not checkbox to the left of the section class, type and size. This is, or we can use additional filter with the not for beams, not uh, I section 12 by 26. Very useful tool. For example, you can differentiate if you went on the bolts panel, shop bolts from sight bolts. From the joints panel, you can find which is the parent and which is the child joint connection. Now we have the section class section type. All we need to do is change out the section size and we'll change that to W21 by 55. Once that's done, hit the Save button which will bring up the Save Query dialog box. So you're going to name the query accordingly. For me, I will name it Beam 21 by 55. Select the OK button. Select OK again. A second query has been created based on Beam's I section of 21 by 55. I can isolate the beams. I can use that in conjunction with Select All Marked Objects, which will mark the beams. From there, it's easy to just number the selected elements that are highlighted. So I'll go to the Output tab and do a simple numbering. I'll change out the start from 1000 just to 1. Hit the Apply and OK to number the selected elements. As you can see on the main parts, when I select the single parts category and the row, the elements, the beam elements, are highlighted in the structure. Let me just size that and X out. So the elements have been numbered. Let's select them by right-clicking on the text and hitting Execute. 
Now we'll use the Select All Marked Objects to select and mark the beams that we want to detail. Once that's done, we'll open up the drawing process. And of course, we're going to go to the selection category and detail the beams on a NCB sheet each, starting at drawing number seven. Take notice to expand the arrangements. And you can have options on how the drawings will be created by this preferred arrangement. So the single parts have been detailed on a B-size sheet each. We'll repeat the process to detail the main parts. So again, execute, let's mark. And I'll scroll to the category selected assemblies and detail them on a C-size sheet. Selected assemblies each on a C size sheet. So details have been created using the Beam query, creating NC and DXF files. Now, once the drawings have finished processing, we're going to create NC files based on the Beam query that we've just finished. So I want to right click on the text and I'm going to select Execute and then marked objects. So from there, I'll go on to the output tab. And I can create an NC file, which takes a matter of seconds. I can create DXF of all objects. I can go to the NC settings and further customize that. Or I can create DXFs of plates that have been selected prior. So for this example, we're just going to create the NC files. And before I'm finished the sentence, there it is. The NC files have been successfully generated. Again, I can create a DXF by the push of a button. And the DXFs within seconds have been created. Creating external lists. So drawings of the structure have been created, single parts and main, main parts, along with the NC and the DXF files. Next, we're going to be looking at uh, creating lists. So we're going to select the Create List icon. And you're going to get this warning, identical part detection has not been started. Do you want to continue? Just select OK to bring up the dialog box. So we want to create external lists based on predefined queries. So we want to have that bullet checked. I've already done one previously for the column model role. Now I'll expand the flyout and select the beam with the section size query that we've created. I'm going to hit the Apply key and go to Next. So I'll name the extract the same as the query beam with the section size, just to keep things a little bit clear. I don't want to get mixed up. So beam I section. 21 by 55, and I'll select OK. So the extract has been created. So now that the extracts have been created, we can go and select the bomb template palette, and up will come the bomb templates. You can see that part list is highlighted, and this is out of the box. The American flag confirms that. You have the assembly lists. And you have all of the different types of lists under the assembly lists. You have lock phase. If I select the blue man, then you're able to use your own customized list. So check out the categories 
and what kind of list you could use, what kind of list are available. Here you have a fasteners list. There you have a parts list. So let's use, let's create a beam list. Here you have a preview of the list with the description. So just select the beam list from the parts list category. Select OK. And a beam list will be created based on the selected elements in the structure. You can save this list and you have to route it to the project folder the first time. So that's why I moved it. I don't want to show you my direct path. But as, as we're waiting, you can see the elements, beam one, two, three, four, the quantity, the description, length, part weight, grade, and so on. So now I've navigated to the folder that does contain the beam list. And we've created bills of materials. There we have our databases. Here we have our details that we created at the top of the um, lesson. Let me just back it up again. Here we have our NC files. If I expand, we have our NC and our DXF. The UPDs is what holds them together or connects them. I can open up a DXF in Peer AutoCAD. back it up and within this folder you'll see the extracts that were created the last one being the beam with the section size 12 by 55 so all of these folders are created automatically when you when you're working with advanced steel there's no need to go in and create them individually so that's a good thing so if I expand the list, you can see that I can save it. And as I was saying before, I'm routed or mapped right to the same folder. I can name it with a different name if I want. Uh, the, the name is not going to take on all of the characters that you see in the file name. So keep that in mind when you're naming your list. So if I put beam list w21 by 55 that will be the name of your external bill of materials so this is just a little bit of an insight into using the queries to create nc files dxf files external bombs drawings etc with advanced steel thanks for watching